Hey guys, and welcome to my review and analysis of the season finale of Bates Motel, appropriately titled Norman. So I didn't do recaps for all the episodes of the season, and I actually really regret it because this season has been fantastic. It's really impressive to see how a show can escalate over the course of seasons, taking the time to build a complete story. And especially considering the low risk landscape of TV nowadays, I'm impressed with A&E for allowing them to complete the story despite modest ratings. Meanwhile, look at ABC canceling Nashville, Agent Carter, Castle, and the Muppets. Hey guys, we cancel all of our shows. What are we gonna do? We gotta get some fresh stuff in there. What do we got? Well, we got this shit, Dharma, and a little CG imaginary critter. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Alf the Next Generation. That's, that's gonna get us back on track. So last week ended with a massive cliffhanger. Norman thinking he was doing the right thing, and to him, the only logical way for him and Norma to be together forever, by killing them both, turning on the broken furnace, and filling the house with deadly gas. The episode concluded with Romero rescuing Norma and Norman from the gas-filled bedroom, and Norman comes too, but Norma is unresponsive, and it seemed to be the end of Norma Bates. Again, one hell of a cliffhanger! So did Bates Motel pull a cheap stunt a la Walking Dead or Game of Thrones and kill a major character only to bring them back in a cheap fake out? Not this time, as we learn early in the episode that Norma has died. Wow, this is huge and marks a massive change in the dynamic of the show. Though for a while we only hear that Norma has died, and it makes it seem not quite reality yet. I have to give credit to the writers considering how surprising the twist was, even though we knew it was coming. It's crazy they could pull it off and still make it feel unexpected. So this was a somewhat smaller episode after last week's big closing Sandman scene, for sure a high point of the entire show but they chose this time to focus mainly on Norman and Romero, each struggling to deal with the reality of Norma's death in their own respective ways. As Norman is taken to the hospital on a stretcher, he flashes back to happier times, a golden-hued memory of Norma assuring him that she will never leave him. This is the core of Norman's issues for the episode. If she would never leave him, she can't be dead. It's not possible and must be some kind of trick or plan that she pulled off without his knowledge, and is in fact still alive. We all know this isn't true, but it's tragically painful to witness Norman unable to cope with this concept. Meanwhile, Romero is distraught, consumed by vengeance and only fueled by proving that Norman is responsible for Norma's death. We meet a new character, Detective Chambers, who is on the case, and thanks to the note and ring left by Norma, believes that it was Norma responsible for a murder-suicide attempt. Of course we and Romero know better, but he doesn't have any proof. Yet. So we see him desperately doing anything in his power to find a way to tie Norman to the killing. He picks up Norman from the hospital and lets him know in a very forthcoming way that he's onto him. His secret weapon? Grabbing people by the neck! Which I gotta admit seems like it would be pretty effective. Damn, Romero has gone hardcore! He goes to the morgue to see Norma and say goodbye, and at first the morgue workers don't think it's a good idea. But at this point, you should just get the hell out of Romero's way. This is a man on a mission. This scene is very effective because the first time we actually see Norma's body is also the first time Romero sees her. So our reaction to the reveal of her and the finality of her death is just as upsetting to us as it is Romero. While I did feel their marriage earlier in the season was a little abrupt, the way the show developed their relationship over the course of the season was exceptional. Romero is a truly good man and gave us a glimpse into a side of Norma we rarely ever saw being happy. It's so sad that things turned out this way for them. If Norma had been willing to do the hard thing and send Norman back to Pinewood like Romero and Dylan wanted last week, and what Norman really needs, she would still be alive. Then back at the very empty and depressing Bates house, Norman is distracted by his reflection and in a flurry throws his medication away. He's still struggling what reality has become for him. But it's easy to relate to, Norma was his world, and to some extent she emotionally crippled him to the point of utter dependence and the barren house really drives his point home. He's alone now, but Norman still can't accept that, waiting patiently for Norma to come back to him. Norman is carrying the TV Romero gave to Norma, another reminder of their relationship he didn't approve of. He drops the TV beating the crap out of it, and Chambers shows up with some impressive timing. Norman tries to shrug it off, saying the TV was broken. Nice cover up, dude, if the TV was really broken. Not really a reason to beat the shit out of it. She probes Norman with questions about what happened and Romero's marriage to his mother. He admits to not liking Romero, thinking he was manipulating his mother, but doesn't know much about the specifics as he was in Pinewood. There will probably be a lot of debate over whether Chambers suspects Norman of being involved in the killing at this point, but I don't think so based on the way the scene plays out. She seems to believe that Norman is a troubled boy grieving the loss of his mother, and that's the extent of it. At least we aren't given any other information to believe otherwise. And it makes sense that Norman does need to get away with the murder for the story's sake. Norman shows up at the funeral home to make arrangements. We also meet Sable, a goth girl that works preparing the bodies for funerals. I have a feeling she'll be showing up in season 5 for some reason. She just seemed too specific to not see again. I mean, she likes taxidermy kind of stuff like Norman, and as a goth, must be uh, a little eccentric, also like Norman. Now, Norman himself sees Norma's body for the first time, but still refuses to believe she's dead. He pleads with Norma that he wishes she would have just told him the plan. Even her eyes open 
open momentarily, which scared the crap out of me. This to me is to show that Norma is still alive, in Norman's mind. Even though Norma is dead, I think we'll still be seeing Vera Farmiga as a visual representation of Norman becoming Norma as we have occasionally throughout the show. He also takes Romero's ring back, pocketing it, which Sable sees. Again, I feel like this might come up later. At the house, Norman hears singing and music playing, and it sounds like Norma. He looks out onto the piano, but nobody is there. But Judo is, and he tells him not to worry, Mother will be back soon. This is clearly Norman continuing to break with reality, toppling further into his descent into madness. But then Dylan calls, trying to make peace over trying to get Norman institutionalized, assuming Norma is upset. But he doesn't know Norma is dead. And Norman doesn't reveal this, but suggests that it's best that they don't speak anymore. Damn! Obviously this isn't the last we've heard of Dylan. I have a feeling he'll show up in season 5 after eventually hearing Norma has died and gets a little too close to figuring out what Norman has been up to, leading to his death. I would be upset about this mainly for Emma's sake. It is the same as Norma and Romero. Once someone finds happiness in this show, life finds a way to dick you over and take it away. Norman and Romero's conflict reaches an emotional head during Norma's empty funeral. Norman delivers a eulogy, getting angry at the situation and God's supposed plan. Romero saunters in and Norman confronts him, wanting him to leave, and returning his ring. Aw oh, shit! This is the final straw for Romero who beats the crap out of Norman. Can't blame him there, really. Kid kinda had it coming. Romero has been pushed beyond the brink and goes back to his office retrieving a gun. He's not interested in doing things the right way anymore, completely consumed by losing Norma and is on a warpath to fucking kill Norman. But he doesn't get too far. When leaving the police station, the DEA shows up and Romero gets arrested. The DEA had been trying to get to Romero via Rebecca, and they finally put together Romero had lied about the nature of their relationship. So now he's implicated in the money laundering scheme, which he was a part of. He did kill Paris and pocketed a fat load of cash. Not quite so innocent there, bud. So we don't know how long Romero is off the jail for, but he stopped for now. And that's what counts for Norman and will no doubt also help him get away with the crime as Romero is the only one close enough to figure any of it out. Poor bastard. Norman isn't doing much better, still deep in denial over Mother's death. He heads to the graveyard digging up Norma's grave. He is happy to see her clutching her close, but he's not sure what to do, deciding to take her body home with him. This is a fairly organic way to get Norman in possession of her body. He's beyond desperate at this point, and it makes sense he would dig up her body just to see her. And this all ties into a major element of Psycho, the mummified corpse of Mother watching from the window. Back at the house, he brings in Norma's body over the threshold, reassuring her with Judo being there to greet them. He lays her on the couch, urging her to wake up, telling her it's safe now to finally reveal that she's alive and open her eyes. Of course, there is no response. Norman runs off to fetch something, which turns out to be glue. He uses it to glue Norma's eyes open. If her eyes are open, he believes it will help her come back. The image of her forced open eyes is probably the most horrifying of the whole episode. Her milky pupil staring lifelessly out. Then Chick shows up. Great. My favorite character. Glad, glad this guy's still around. Ugh. He's heard about Norma's passing and has come by to comfort Norman and brought some chicken enchilada casserole for him. The secret ingredient is math. I really suspected and sort of hoped that Chick would see Norma's body and Norma would be forced to kill him. I don't know what the hell is the deal with this character. It's just always groan inducing when this bearded philosopher guy shows up to spout some heady bullshit. This time it does actually prove useful as he lays out very dryly what has happened. This seems to finally sink into Norman what's happened leaving him speechless and heaving. Chick leaves and Norman goes back to her body, now finally realizing what little is left of his life now that she's gone. He scrambles upstairs, retrieving Norma's revolver, sticking the barrel in his mouth, intending to kill himself. But before he can, the sweet siren song of the piano downstairs playing I'll Be Home For Christmas pulls him away. This time, as Norman descends the stairs, we are presented with an idyllic Christmas tableau. His mother is seen playing at the piano, and there's a perfect Christmas tree, hearkening back to their confrontation when searching for trees a few weeks ago. And it all really does look so wonderful. Norman looks at peace for once, setting down the gun, joining his mother at the piano. We pull out, seeing Christmas lights flicker on outside the house. Wow, damn, we're finally seeing the fantasy completely taking over Norman's psyche and indulging in that other side of his personality in order to cope with the shittiness of what reality has become. And the fantasy is so perfect, everything Norman wants, which really only boils down to him and his mother together. So who can blame him for coping with the situation via his dream fantasy? Nothing can ever separate them now, because it's all completely in his head. This sets up for a really exciting fifth season and final chapter in the Bates Motel saga as the mother personality becomes more dominant and what's left of Norman will simply fade away. And I'm so excited to see the end of the story play out. What? What's that, mother? I know, I was just about to ask them. Be quiet, mother. Well, what did you guys think about the finale? And where do you think things are headed in season five and going into the end? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to Found Flicks for all the best in horror entertainment. Thanks for watching, guys.